everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katerina. If you're new here, welcome. I am filming, um, oh, I post all types of videos, lifestyle videos, faith, vlogs, Christian, Jesus, everything. So if you're interested, please subscribe. Um, for today, we're going to be doing a little Bible study. It's not going to be long. Um, you might see Milo in the background. He's very interested in today's Bible study. Um, but we're just going to jump into the Word of God and we're just going to read together. It's not going to be very long like I mentioned. I do have a study Bible, ESV study Bible. So we're going to just go based off of this and what it says and kind of break it down together. And I would love it if you guys could comment um, down below anything that you, if you're reading this along with me, um, anything that sticks out to you and what the Holy Spirit um, may say to you. So, Lord, I just want to pray today. Thank you, God, for this time, Father God, together to read your word, Lord, and to understand more about you and to understand more about the will that you have for our lives, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are so faithful and that your word is true and that we can depend on it and we can trust it, Lord. So I thank you, Lord, for this time together, and I bless it, and thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to me and to speaking to them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to be in the book of James. So let's go to James. <clears throat> James is in the New Testament, if you don't know. Let's start in James. So let's read the first chapter, shall we? Or let's see what we can get to. It's not long. Um, okay, so James, chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion. Greetings. It says, testing of your faith. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Wow. Okay. Let's let's stop there really quick. I kind of want, kind of want to break that down. Joy in trials. Hallelujah. It says trials are designed to produce spiritual maturity and should therefore be counted as joy. You know, I always go back to that verse whenever someone is going through a hard time or I'm going through a hard time. And I remember this and it, you know, it says um, to have joy when trials are there because like it said here, it's to produce spiritual maturity is for you to learn. Um, and it says so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So it's so interesting because and it produces your faith, your faith. So it's so interesting, like obviously, like when we're in the middle of something hard, like we don't want to rejoice. Like we don't want to like, you know, like count it all joy. Like we don't want to do that. We want to like sulk and complain and like compare and you know just it's a hard situation obviously it's not fun but I think I love you know I love the way that the bible tells us it's so contrary to how we immediately want to feel it says no count it all joy and I'm always trying to remember that even in the midst of hard things like count it joy let it test your faith let let yourself grow in faith you know we're tr we're supposed to be going from glory to glory we're supposed to be becoming more and more like Jesus every day as Christians. So it makes sense that we should count it joy and that we should let it test our faith. Um, so it's so interesting, you know, the world is so counter, like the Bible, like the Bible says one thing and the world says another thing. And like, we have to rewire our brains to follow the word of God and not what we were known to do in the world. So I think that's so good. Um, trials are tests that challenge faith. When trials occur, one should count it all joy, not meaning mere worldly temporal, temporal happiness, but rather spiritual enduring, complete joy in the Lord who is sovereign over all things, including trials. So that's a good breakdown of it too. Then it says, testing of your faith defines the meaning of a trial for the Christian. As Jesus was tested in the wilderness, which is in um, Matthew, it says chapter four. So believers are tested. The Greek uh, word testing denotes a positive test intended to make one's faith genuine. Wow. The result is steadfastness, a life of faithful endurance and amid troubles and afflictions. Wow. The result is steadfastness. You know, like, I, you know, I want to be known as someone who is steadfast, you know, who was like, steady steadfast who endures who keeps going like i think that is just so beautiful steadfastness leads ultimately to perfection hallelujah even though we don't we're not aiming and striving towards perfection but we're 
We're striving towards the one who is perfect, which is Jesus. So it makes sense that, you know, we would have characteristics of him, which is steadfastness. Believers grow in holiness, but are not yet perfected in it. Such perfection will be realized only when Jesus returns. Amen. So good. Okay, let's read a little bit more. Um, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. This one kind of gets me because in in some areas in my life, like I can struggle with doubt. Um, just because maybe like certain promises haven't come to pass or certain areas in my life have been harder than others. It is hard and it is to like, it is hard to have faith. But this is why I so believe that we have to keep our eyes fixed on God and not on the circumstance because when we fix our eyes on the circumstance, we have no faith because the circumstance may not be changing, you know, but God is the one who will change the circumstance in our favor for his will to be done in our lives. So I really try to re remind myself, like, you know, just look towards Jesus, just look at him and let him, you know, sustain you um, and let him guide you and let him tell you what to do next. Um, and then let him be the one to make the promise come to pass because he's the one who's going to be doing it, not you and your own strength. So, but when it says that, um, for that person, the one who doubts for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord that convicts me so much. Cause I'm like, Ugh. I hope I'm not like blocking my own blessing because I'm doubting, you know? Um, and he is a double minded man and stable in all his ways. Like, oof. All right, let's let's see what my side Bible has to say about that. So it says, um, James addresses the believer who lacks wisdom in handling trials. Wisdom, as in the Old Testament, is a God-given, God-centered discernment regarding the practical issues in life. Wisdom comes from prayer for God's help. God gives generously and without reproach. He does not want anyone to hesitate to come to him. I think that's so good too, is that he gives generously. Like we don't have to be like so limited in our small mind thinking, you know, we can go to the one who knows it all and he can give us, you know, the instructions on what to do next. So I believe that's, I think that's so like beautiful and so good of him to do that for us because we need wisdom. Um, I love the book of Proverbs. I just really love like how, real and honest and like plain it is like it's so like just like right there in your face there's no sugar coating there's no like you know like not much like that you have to dissect I mean obviously there is because it's the word of God and you want to seek him but like there's just certain things that just make so much sense and it's just so clear and it will humble you real quick but I love that book because um it just teaches you so much about wisdom and um what is wise according to the Lord? Um, so yeah, it's so good. Um, it says about faith, it's settled trust and confidence in God based on his character and promises as re as revealed in scripture. Doubting, um, <clears throat> vacilla vacillating, 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 I don't know that word, I'm sorry. Between trusting God and trusting the world are one's natural abilities. This makes a person like a wave of the sea, a picture of instability and uncertainty mm. a person who doubts god's goodness dishonor him dishonors him all right there's some more conviction for me um okay it's so true though because i've heard this quote and i actually heard it today um a person who worries cannot trust god like if you're worrying about something like you can't trust god and this says like here like a person who doubts god's goodness dishonors him like we're doubting what God said and we're we're dishonoring him because we're saying that he's not true and that he won't make things come to pass. Ooh, all right. Such a person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord since he is unsure whether God is good or will do good. Wow. He is a double biden man and and that is in two minds, torn between God and the world. Wow. And there is therefore unstable in all his ways. All right. Well, this convicted me and this was only um 
eight verses. It doesn't take much, baby. Um, I'm going to stop it there for today, but that is just so good. This was James verses one through eight. Um, I hope it blessed you. Um, I do want to recommend to you just to go deeper into these verses. Honestly, I've could have I've could have broken it down a lot more, but I just wanted to read what my read you read to you what my Bible had, and um, hope it encouraged you. Hope it just taught you some things about your faith, the testing of your faith, not to doubt, how to look for wisdom, how to seek God about all things. So, yeah, hope it blessed you in some way. I'm just gonna pray us out really quick. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for this time together, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is true, God, that does not lie, Lord. Thank you, God, that we can go to you generously. We can ask you generously, Lord, for wisdom and to increase our faith, God. In the Bible, it says, um, help my, one of the guys who was talking to Jesus in the New Testament, he said, Lord, help my unbelief because he was doubting, Lord. So I pray that you would just help our unbelief, God. Help us to not doubt when you have told us your perfect will and the promises you have for our lives. Let us not doubt, but let us look to you and let us look and just walk with you step by step. And I know that you will, you who is good and perfect will make all things complete. You will bring all things to completion, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Help us to fall more in love with your word and who you are, Lord Jesus. And we pray this all in your beautiful name. We pray. Amen. So that is it for today, guys. Hope you have been blessed. Um, we will pick this back up and I am hoping to be posting a few of these videos a week so if you're interested please subscribe please comment down below any insights that you may have had about the book of james that we have read so far or any other questions or anything that you may have as well i'm also on instagram if you'd like to communicate and talk on there so anyways um that's all for today don't forget to be the best person that you can be and to love on people remember jesus loves you and i'll see you guys all soon bye